Hey guys, I want to take a sec, well, more than a second. This is going on YouTube. I usually take about 10 minutes <laughs> uh, to talk about the wonders that is moving. So I'll tell you my experiences. Oh God. I've lived in five states and in those five states, three different cities, well, three different metro four four different metro areas. And then when I lived in Rhode Island, one. And then when I lived in Wisconsin, two. Virginia, Indiana. So 10 different metro areas. Uh, I've gotten really good at it. I have this mental picture, this mental map in my head. I went back to Detroit after being gone for like 10 years. I'm driving around like, okay, we're going here, we're going there, I know where I am. And I was like, how do I still remember this? It was like second nature. I lived there for 15 years, so it should be, but it was really cool. Um, so much has changed though. Uh, so what I'm looking at right now is, I like Lexington, I really like Lexington. Um, the job that I was talking, I'm trying to remember, there's so many jobs being talked about right now. There was a job that I was hearing about that I really, really wanted, right? And the lady's like, um, I know that they said this number. What they really meant was this number. Are you still good with talking to them? I said, I'm negotiable. I am. But the, and then the lady today was like, okay, so this is what they're offering. And I said, that won't work. I make 10000 more than their highest. She goes, I'm going to use you as a case study. Send me your resume. I'm going to show it to them. And when they go, holy crap, this guy's perfect. I'm going to say, you're $10,000 at your highest under him and what he's valued at right now. So I'm not willing to take a $10,000 hit because that's a lot of money. And I could use that. <laughs> I already don't know how to manage my funds. I need a boyfriend. This is going to sound weird. But when I'm in a relationship, I am much better with money. So we're talking about moving now. When I moved, any time prior to 2008, I think it was 2008. Great, the Great Recession, 2008, right? Yeah. Lost my job at, at uh, Bridgewater Interiors, Jackson Control. Um, my boss was a real homophobe and wound up being a real prick to me. And in the end, um, I was not, I am, I was not the most politically savvy when it came to um, hiding who, who was saying what to whom. So my upper management was getting their asses handed to them because our customer kept calling them out for, they would call me and say, hey, what's really happening with us? Except they would do it slyly because they knew me. They'd be like, who does the following function at your plant? I'd be like, oh, that would be me. Okay. Um, what about the managers? Well, you know, we're at a stage in this launch. That the managers don't have to go and sign off on anything. Well, they hadn't been signing off on it. And they were telling the customer they were. So I provided the documentation just like they asked. that showed that they weren't. And I was. And lo and behold, my, my management got in a lot of trouble. Like sex of shit that they were. So I am relieved of duty. Um, it, my program disappeared. And they were like, yeah, we don't need you anymore. So I move on in the world. And I spend two months looking for a job. I found a job in Wisconsin. Working at a company that made laundry systems. And I have to tell you. I flew out, landed in Appleton, and the whole state smells, well, that part of the state smells like a dairy, a dairy barn, it's just cow shit everywhere. Um, so I grew up on a dairy farm. For me, it was like, ah, home. It's really what it felt like. Uh, so I had met somebody on MySpace. This is how far, oh, this is how long ago, and what the, the level of everything was at the time. Uh, met somebody on MySpace who was pretty cool. 
He later turns out to be a creeper. And the coolness factor, he didn't have that. There's a reason why certain people reach out to you. And that's because they're looking to be popular and they're not. And I've noticed a lot of narcissists are, are drawn to me because I give a lot of attention. And if you give a lot of attention, they're receiving attention. They're receiving, you know, what they think they deserve. Unfortunately, after I deal with you for a certain amount of time, I figure out you're a narcissist and then you're fake and they are all fake. And I feel bad for them because being, living a fake life in a real world is sucky. I live a real life in a fake world. And it sucks too. It sucks for me. Nobody else, just me. So get to Wisconsin, meet this guy. Uh, we have lunch and then it was just, it was really nice. He was came to the airport and everything. So we get to talk and it was cool. So I go home, get told I got the job. And my move that time was, I had a house. It was a beautiful house. Uh, it was 1,800 square feet, three stories above ground and a basement. Um, Brit Tudor revival from like the 1920s. It was gorgeous. Yeah, it's now abandoned and empty. I think they're tearing it down. The, the whole neighborhood just went. So I'm part of this whole migration out of Detroit. Um, get to, we get close to the point. I meet Matt. I've talked about him before. Uh, then that weekend, I'm out. I'm just out. I, I pack my stuff. I packed my car full of stuff. And my dog. I had a dog. His name is Jackson. We get in the car and drive from Detroit through Chicago, up to, through Milwaukee, and up to Oshkosh, and then over to Ribbon. And I stayed at a motel, well, the yeah, Alamo Motel, for a couple weeks while I looked, first looked for an apartment, found one. Uh, it was in an old hospital that they had converted, really cool, old hospital that they had converted into apartments. So, Jackson and I move in, or get our stuff, I wait for the people to bring in my, my stuff, my, my, all my furniture and whatnot. So the first night I show up, I go out with the guy that, the narcissist guy, um, and we go to Green Bay, and that's where I meet this really gorgeous guy named Mark, who was TSA, I think he was Army, um, from Green Bay. And that night I also met my ex-husband. We're not going to refer to him as the evil ex-husband. He's not evil. That would involve thinking. So, do you like my blue sippy cup? <laughs> it's not a sippy cup, but I call them sippy cups because if you drop it, nobody cares. Um, my my ex-husband sees me, takes note of me, like that's the guy. That one right there. Uh, but. It took me a two weeks to get my stuff, get my stuff. I'm like, oh, this is great. Move into my apartment. Come to find out Jackson knows how to open doors. He literally, there was a lever on the door. He would open the door and walk out into the hallway, go down the stairs, or there was no, he couldn't get down the stairs. He'd have to like push up, uh, uh, what is that called? Anyway, the bar, you have to push on the bar. So he'd go wait at the elevator until somebody was going down. And he would get in the elevator with them and go down to the first floor and then walk around until the manager lady would take him into her office and they would sit. And she's like, she called me one day. She says, this can't continue. <laughs> so then we got a brown door knob and he learned immediately how to do that. And then I had to get a crate and then I had to like zip tie the crate shut. There were so many zip ties on it because the little bastard could get out. He was very smart, very smart dog. Where am I going with this? Moving. So it was, it was a very traumatic experience for me because I was like, I knew nobody. I knew this one guy and his friends, his roommate was hot. 
And then I'm slowly starting to meet people, and it was cool. Appleton is very clicky. For 100,000 people, there's a lot of gay people. There's a college there. But Lexington is close to 400,000? Ish. And there's a major university there. Um, and I'm hearing that it's clicky. But I'm also hearing that, apparently, I'm already in one. <laughs> so I'm not going to worry too much. But, you know, it's that you try to break into these communities where everybody's already, like, ganged up, right? It's dreadful. Um, moving to Lacrosse was a little easier. I stayed with my landlady in her apartment. I slept on the couch for like two weeks while my stupid ass ex-husband was supposed to be cleaning up and packing up the apartment we were in, the house that we were renting. Didn't do shit. That, the landlady called me up just screaming. I wound up paying $2,000 because he didn't do all the things I told him to do. And I was way on the other side of the state, literally like, I think it's two and a half hours away. I couldn't have moved, I couldn't have done anything. We had people come and do the move for us because I wasn't paying for it. I just wasn't. And it just was, it was, oh, I was so mad. And he just stood there like, I don't understand why you're angry with me. I told you what to do when you didn't do any of it. That should have been a sign, shouldn't it? So, yeah, that move was easy. No, that move was expensive. Moving from La Crosse to Virginia was easier. Getting the F out of Virginia was decent. My company, though, in um, Federal Mogul in Virginia, they gave me a lot of money to move. It was insane. I was like, what the? Because I had to pay it back. <laughs> I was there for nine months and I was done. They were just dreadful, awful, evil, evil. And the new regime that came in that pushed out the old one, they fired every, they fired all of these managers, except for the ones that were mistreating me and brought in new people. And the new people fixed everything and made everything look right. So that was cool. But in the meantime, I was done. I hated the area, I hated everything. I was just completely toasted with people. So, yeah, there's a lot of movement. Most of it's like, eh, this time when I move, I'm, I'm hiring people. I don't have that much stuff anymore, so it won't be that expensive. And my goal is, when I move, get an apartment, I have one year to get my shit together. Figure my stuff out. Um, like I said, I know people in Lexington. I'm hoping it's Lexington. If it's Utah, it's Utah. We're good. Uh, I'm starting to know people in Utah. That's pretty slick, eh? As well as um, Ohio would be okay, but I haven't heard back from them. Oh, let me rephrase that. I have an interview with them. It's next week. I have to, like, disappear for a hot minute. I'm also maybe up for an on-site interview in South Carolina. I have to do a lot of research. I got my green belt from Johnson Controls in 2006, seven, somewhere around there. Have I used it? No. Have I used bits and pieces of it? Yeah, quite a bit. If you were to say, hey, just tell me about a time, I'd be like, uh. Some stuff is so ingrained in my head that I can't really tell you, it, for instance. Now, some stuff is like, psh, easy. Like DOEs. I love DOEs. Design of experiment. And then Kaizen. They're like, tell me, tell me something about Kaizen. I'm like, I really want to tell you my personal story about Kaizen. At some point, I will explain Kaizen. You guys will find it entertaining. Maybe. Mostly. It actually is pretty entertaining. It's small, small incremental changes that you, you cause in your life to make things better. They're not meant to be like, hey, let's, let's create a new constitution and overthrow the government. It's more like, hey, I don't like this specific part of this law. Let's get that crossed off. That's what Kaizen is. But anyway, um... It is Friday night, 
I'm already hitting the vodka. I am tired. I am like about life. I'm okay. I'm allowed to be like, eh. It's just been a long week. And I'm not really happy with my job. And I, I love the people I work with. I can't stand. And I love my management. There are certain segments of it, though, that habitually make my life a misery. And they're allowed to run rampant. And that is just not acceptable. I love you, Buck. I love you. I love you guys. I love you, dude. Dude, you need to figure your shit out because I'm looking for you.